Coach, what did it mean to uh, you to see the reception Al continues to get in this city? Well, um, you know, it's it, I'm a little older now, so I'll walk through airports or go different places. I'm in Charlotte. He's in Just Valentine. Yeah. And people look at me and they don't know my name, but they know you coached Alan. And that really hits you. You know, and this is like a long time ago. Um, but the impact he's had on our sport, you know, on young kids, uh, it's just amazing. But Philly's different. You know, I, your dad will tell you that the basketball culture here is second to none, you know, with the high schools and colleges. You know, we look at what Jay's done. Um, and the history of this this franchise, and then walking down that the lane, and you see Mo and Bobby, and, you know, you see guys that maybe other places they wouldn't have a statue, and that really that's the thing that stands out most to me. But um, I remember the first time I actually was near Allen, other than coaching against him was uh, we had a summer league game and our rookies were going to play against some of the veterans. And we were at the old Temple Arena mm -hmm. and it was packed. And I'm sitting with Billy King and I'm saying, where's Alan? <laughs> and the game's about to start and all of a sudden everybody starts moving around and rumbling and I hit Billy and I say, Welcome to Philly now. This is going to be the biggest challenge of our life. <laughs> but it made me realize how important this kid was. Uh, and not a day goes by that I don't feel really happy that I got to be part of his life. And then also wonder what I could have done better. I'll tell you about Alan, this is a silly thing, but when Coach Thompson died, he calls me every once in a while and cries. But when Coach Thompson died, it was about four years ago, I guess, something like that. And he said, Coach, um, you can't die before me. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you know, Coach Thompson passed away, but I can't have you die before me. And I said, Alan, I'm 80. There's a good chance that I'm going to be gone before you. He said, no, 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 Coach. You can't do it. But I think that's how he feels about everybody. That's been part of his life. Larry, he, he turns 50 next year. What do you think when you hear that? I mean, you, you've always called him the kid, but he's going to be 50. I think he still could play. <laughs> <laughs> I think if he wanted to, he still could play. But uh, no, I, you know, it. Again, it's everywhere I go, I go to an AAU event, and generally the best player on the court that's small wears number three in a sleeve. It's, it's unbelievable. I went to Carolina's practice. I have four granddaughters at North Carolina. And um, Comac Ryan had number three. I said, you're the first white kid I've ever seen wear number three. What's going on here? But uh, I don't know. You know. You talk about Oscar, you talk about Will, talk about Jerry West, Bill Russell. Um, people are gonna forget those guys unless you know somebody mentions what they've accomplished. I don't think anybody's ever gonna affect, uh, forget Allen and what he's done, what he's meant to the game, especially here. But when, um, I don't know if it was David or Josh, but. When they talk about him being a, a world figure, I think that's true. And I don't think you can, I know our games become a world sport, but I don't know many players that had the impact like Allen, maybe Kobe, but 50, I can't, I can't believe it. We all silly like the mayor. 